Okay, let's look at this question. It's a grade 11 uh, end of year question from November 2017. It's a Newton's law question. So, a tow truck pulls a car along a gravel road. Check this. It says gravel road. The moment we see gravel road, we know we are going to have... Goodness me, look at my handwriting. Let's try that again. The moment we see gravel, we know it's a rough surface and we know we are going to have friction. So before we go anywhere, remember we have friction. It says the force applied by the engine of the tow truck is 9,000 newtons. The mass of the tow truck is 1,300 kilograms and the mass of the car is 950 kilograms. The vehicles are connected to each other by an inelastic tow bar of negligible mass. See the diagram below. So there is the diagram. Now it says to you the tow truck and car move at constant velocity. Remember if something is traveling at constant velocity the acceleration is zero which also means that F net is going to be zero because if there is a net force you will accelerate. If you move at constant velocity then there is no net force. Now it says to you, define the term frictional force. So here it is here. Frictional force is a force that opposes the motion of an object and which acts parallel to the surface. So remember, we use this knowledge of the parallel when we draw our force diagrams, but you have to put it in the definition or you don't get your marks. Now it says, name and state the law that explains why the force exerted by the tow truck on the car is the same as the force exerted by the car on the tow truck. Whenever you see this pattern, two objects and then the two objects are reversed, tow truck on the car, car on the tow truck, you know that it is related to Newton's third law of motion when object A exerts a force on object B Object B simultaneously exerts an oppositely directed force of equal magnitude on object A. Now remember you are not allowed to paraphrase this. You have to state it exactly as it is in the guidelines. And when you use this law, make sure that you do follow the pattern. Tow truck on the car, car on the tow truck. Bob on the floor, the floor on Bob. Examples like that. You always have to have the same two forces but oppositely exerted. Now it says to you draw a labeled free body diagram indicating all the forces on the tow truck for five marks. So we know if we have five marks we need five arrows. So here is our little blob for the tow truck. The first force is obvious it is the force of the weight which I'm going to call FG but you can also call little w for the weight. Then the tow truck is on a surface so we immediately have the normal force or Fn, force normal, if you like. Then you can see this force over here, the 9000 Newton force, that is Fa, and we draw it where it's being applied. And then what else do we have? We have this tow bar here. So this is a force of tension, and the tension is pulling away from the tow truck. So look here, we've got four arrows, very obvious, easy to see from the diagram. But what are we missing? We are missing our friend friction. So friction opposes motion. The tow truck is going forward in the direction of the applied force. So because friction opposes motion, it the friction must be going backwards and we use little f for friction and because the car is moving it is more correctly labeled as little fk for kinetic friction. Now it says to you if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tow truck and the road surface is 0, 0.45. So this is telling you our friend mu is 0, 0.45. Okay. Now it says to you, calculate the magnitude of the tension in the tow bar. So let's have a look here. It's five marks, so it's not going to be immediately obvious. It's not just a simple formula and a calculation. They're giving us mu, which means that we're probably going to have to use mu to calculate the force of friction. But if we want to calculate the tension in the tow bar, 
we have to look at all the forces that are going on here. So we will use Newton's second law and we will say F net equals MA. And we are interested in horizontally, okay, because why? We're not interested in the vertical forces because the truck is not lifting up off the road or anything. It is only moving horizontally. So we're only going to look at the horizontal forces. Okay, so if we look at the horizontal forces in our diagram here, these, this is horizontal, we have three forces. We have FA, we have T, and we have FK. So horizontally, we should definitely state here, direction of motion is positive. Write it out properly, not cheating like me who's got no space here. Okay. So we're going to use F net equals MA. So to find the net force, you have to add up all the forces in the plane. So if the direction of motion is positive, the only positive force I have is FA. Then we're going to add the tension, but the tension is oppositely directed, so we have to subtract it. Then we're going to add the force of kinetic friction, which is also not in the direction of motion. So we are going to add it, but it is negative, so it comes to a subtraction. So those are my three horizontal forces that you can see from the force diagram. And because the question says it is moving at constant velocity, this is going to equal the mass times zero, which equals zero. So we could start to substitute here. In the question, it tells you this is Fa, 9,000 newtons. Okay. And then it says to you, what are we calculating? The tension. So we know we don't know the tension. But now it says to you, what about Fk? So if you think about this, we're like, hmm, what is Fk? But I know mu, so we can probably work out Fk. Because remember, Fk is the force of kinetic friction. And if you go to your data sheet, you'll see that Fk equals mu kn. Okay. So Fk is going to be equal to this value of new, mu that is in the question, 0, 0,45. And now we have to figure out the normal force. So to figure out the normal force, remember the normal force is the least normal force of all your forces. To work out the normal force, we have to look in the vertical plane. And we are lucky in this question because we are not on a slope. So this is the simplest case where the normal force is equal to the weight of the car. If you want to know how you can arrive at this in this question, you have to say, okay, F net, we are looking vertically, equals MA, okay? And then what forces have we got vertically? We've got Fn going up and we've got Fg going down. And MA is going to be equal to zero because vertically there is no acceleration. It's not like the car is lifting up off the road. So from this, you get that the normal force is equal to the weight. Okay, and if the normal force is equal to the weight, then we know the weight is the same as Mg. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to substitute for the normal force, it is equal to mg in this question because there are no other forces with a vertical component. If there was another force with a vertical component, it would not be equal to this. So the mass of the car is 1300 and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second downwards. So what is fk going to be equal to here? 0.45 times 1300 times 9.8. It is going to be equal to 5733. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to substitute this here. And then I will get T equals 9000 minus 5733, which gives me how much force? 3267 newtons. That is my tension. Now, to go to the next part of the question, the next part of the question is asking you about the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car tires and the road surface. So the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car tires and the road surface will be different because the car tires have a different surface to the truck tires. What can we use to calculate this? To calculate this, we know that the tension 
this tension over here is the same everywhere but can work in different directions. Now the question doesn't tell you to draw a free body diagram but if you don't draw a free body diagram you're just being blonde it's far better to draw the free body diagram. So over here let's go draw a free body diagram for the car. Here is the little blob for the car. Here is the weight of the car acting downwards. Here is the normal force. Here is the tension which is pulling the car forward. Remember this car it's broken down that's why it's being towed so it's got no engine um, component it's got no nothing pulling it the only thing that's pulling it is this tension over here and then finally what else is going on with the car we have friction because it's on the gravel surface and besides we know this because the question's asking you to calculate mu for the car so if we look at this car it's a little bit simpler than the tow truck there's only four forces and because we're looking for friction and friction is acting parallel to the surface, we are only going to look at the horizontal forces. Now, because these two are connected, they are both moving at the same velocity. So we're still using the direction of motion is positive. And now horizontally for the car, F net equals MA. There's no acceleration, so this equals zero. So the tension, which is pulling the car forward, minus the kinetic friction, which is pulling the car back, equals zero. So the tension equals the kinetic friction. But according to your definitions, tension is the same throughout a string, but can act in different directions. So that means that the tension going backwards from the tow truck is the same as the tension going forwards from the car. So we take our answer from the last question and say 3267 equals the force of kinetic friction. Then the same thing again, we're going to use Fk equals mu k n. So we take this value for kinetic friction, 3267. Remember, this is the force of kinetic friction. We are trying to find mu k. And what will be the normal force? Well, if we look at this car here vertically, the only forces we have going up are the normal and the only force we have going down is the weight. So in this instance, it's the same as the previous instance. The normal is equal to the weight. Remember, this is not going to work if you have any other force with the vertical component. The normal will be something different. So the car weighs 950, it has a mass of 950, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So if you do some algebra, which I'm not going to show you here because more no space, the coefficient of kinetic friction works out to be 0 0.3509, which we can round to 0 0.35. Now remember, the coefficient of kinetic friction is a ratio of two forces. It does not have a unit. So that is our final answer, 0, 0.35 with no unit. Now it says to you, suddenly the tow bar between the car and the tow truck disconnects, it breaks, and the car comes loose. Using a relevant law of motion, explain why the car continues moving forward for a short distance. Okay, so what's happened here? We've broken the tow bar and the car doesn't just stop. It moves forward for a short while. Why does it move forward for a short while? Because it has inertia. So if we look here, we will be using Newton's first law of motion. A body will remain in its state of rest or motion at a constant velocity unless a non-zero net or resultant force acts on it. So the car keeps moving at the beginning because it's got inertia from Newton's um, first law of motion, but there is actually a net force acting on it and the net force acting on it is friction because otherwise the car would just keep going at the same velocity forever and ever and ever. But there is now a net force acting on it, which is friction. And because of the friction, the car comes to a stop because friction opposes motion. So now it says to you, calculate the acceleration of the car as it comes to a stop after a short distance. 
So if we look at this force diagram for the car here, can we make it a bit clearer? Let's look at this car here. Let me redraw this force diagram for the car. Remember in the beginning there was the car, its weight was acting downwards, its normal force was acting upwards, friction was going backwards, and the tension was pulling the car forwards. So what happened now when the tow rope broke? This tension, we got rid of it. So if you look at the force diagram now, the only force we are left with here is the force of kinetic friction. So that is my net force. So to calculation the acceleration of the car as it comes to a stop, we use the second law, F net equals MA, but the only force acting horizontally now is FK, which is going to be equal to MA. So the car weighs, the car has a mass, sorry, of 950, we don't know the acceleration, but in the previous question, we worked out that the tension was equal to the force of kinetic friction because it was balanced because the car was traveling at constant velocity. So we end up with the force of kinetic friction, 3267 equals uh, the mass of the car times the acceleration. So the acceleration will come out to, if you put that in your calculator, 3,44 meters per second per second because it's an acceleration. Remember, acceleration is a vector. So make sure that you give a direction. So you can say against the motion of the car or opposing the motion of the car. If you consider that the diagram has been um, drawn correctly here, this diagram over here, if this has been drawn correctly, everything was moving left, so this would end up being to the right. But I would prefer to say opposing motion because you don't know if they've done anything to the picture. Okay, and that is the end of this question.